Hey guys, Paul here with Patek. So in this video, what I'm going to do is share with you 20 pieces of advice, tips and tricks as to what caused me the greatest amount of anxiety when I started flying my Mini 3 Pro for the first time. And I'm going to show you real world examples of two or three flights that I did. And hopefully that will better prepare you for your first flight. Now, tip number one has to be make sure that you follow all the laws and regulations in the part of the world where you're going to fly your drone. I seem to recall a fairly famous YouTuber getting a $5,000 fine for flying a drone in some area where they shouldn't have been flying it. That's the price of an FX3. I don't know about you, but that would certainly cheese me off. So, um, but that's, you know, follow the regs in the area where you live, you'll sleep better. Tip number two, be respectful of people's privacy. And one way to do that is put your drone up a little bit higher than what most might consider high enough. So if you look at, uh, when you start flying your drone, you're gonna notice that hydro poles are about 35 feet high, light poles are about 20 to 25 feet high. The tallest trees in your area, in my area, are probably 50, 60 feet. So I put my drone up 50 meters. That's 150 feet. And people don't even know the drone is there. And that's the best way to maintain people's privacy. And then you got nobody chasing after you, giving you a hard time. Tip number three, what's the range of my drone? So legally, you're not supposed to lose sight of your drone. I watched a video just recently of this guy standing on a beach where he flew his drone out to a cruise ship. It was 2,000 meters. Holy! That really surprised me. Now, I think DJI claims that the Mini 3 Pro will do 7 to 10 kilometers, but, you know, again, you're not supposed to lose sight of your drone. So I'll show you in this video a practical example of a 400 meter flight that I did out and back. So basically, I was at my mother-in-law's farm. I flew from her farm to another house down the way, turned around, brought it back didn't have any high wind warnings everything was good so you you'll get an idea of how far that you can fly what if i lose sight of my drone that's number four if you lose sight of your your drone just take your thumbs off the joysticks and this is going to happen because when you put your drone up you're going to look up you'll see it but the second you look away and you look back because the mini 3 pro is so small it's so easy it's so hard to find it again and so you have to get used to looking at the screen on the controller to see what your drone is seeing and then oh okay it's looking in that direction i just do a 180 and i can bring it right back very straightforward stuff Tip number five, how to return home. The easiest way to return home is the same way that you started when you press the button on the left side of your controller and then you press and hold the center button to take off the drone. The second the drone takes off, those buttons become a return to home. So you press the button, you do a long press and the drone will turn around and come back to you. And that is probably the simplest way if you get panicked or, you know, just take your thumbs off the joysticks, do the same sequence you did to launch your drone and it's easy peasy. Tip number six, what happens if I go to go too far? That's a really good question because it happened to me the other night. So I was out flying my drone and I tend to fly my drone sometimes. I'll sit on the front porch of my house, which has an overhang, and I was flying the drone out behind me and I had it probably out half a kilometer or a third of a kilometer and I started to get an error message. Um, you're, you're getting a, a connection problem. I can't remember what the exact message was, but it was saying that uh, basically what I had to do was point the controller in the direction. So basically I had to get off my lazy bum, walk out into the middle of the yard and just point the controller and the connection was, you know, I made, I reconnected no problem and I was able to continue flying the drone. So don't panic. You'll be surprised at the number of error messages and some of the error messages. And there's another one I'll share with you further down the list here, which really surprised me as to how much information is available once you start flying your drone. What to watch out for? Okay, this is a really good question as well. So in my neighborhood, I'm gonna watch out for light poles, clothes lines caught me off guard one time, uh, hydro wire poles, uh, hydro wires, hydro poles, that's all the basic stuff. And that varies from place to place. So what I recommend the safest way to fly your drone is take it off straight up 50 meters, go out, fly your drone, turn it around, bring it back. 
And then the more confidence you get, then you'll start working with two joysticks. You'll be turning your drone, moving it in a direction and, and doing all this kind of fancy stuff. But in the beginning, the safest way is take it up straight up, bring it straight back down. When you start bringing it back on a 45 degree angle, you could miss a clothesline, you could miss a light pole. It's easy not to see some of these things when your focus is on the screen of the controller. So watch out for that one. Do not have, and this is tip number eight, and this is a mistake that I made. When you have a drone, you're going to get invited to your friend's houses, a dinner party, that kind of thing. And then they're going to want to stand over your shoulder and they'll be putting pressure on you. Oh, Paul, can you check this out? Can you fly over there? Can you, can we look at that? Da, 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 da. And that's a surefire remedy for smacking a tree or putting your drone into the water. So I would avoid that until you get several miles under your belt, until you get more comfortable with how to operate the drone, all the ins and outs. It's just, it's good advice. Number nine, how high should I fly? So like I said, uh, what I've noticed, I put my drone up 50 meters, if, so that's 150 feet. The second that I start to come below about, you know, 100 feet, then, you know, people walking on the ground are gonna hear the drone, they'll look up and, you know, it draws attention. But I notice that when I have it up 150 feet or 50 meters, nobody even knows it's there. And I can just go on my merry little way do my flight path that I want to do, bring it back home nine times out of 10. Like I said, nobody knows it's there. So put it up uh, 50 meters, depending on your area. It's when you start buzzing, you know, somebody's house or 20 feet up, you know, you're just asking for trouble when you do that kind of stuff. Number 10, how far can I fly? So as I mentioned, um, I'll show you an example of a 400 meter flight that I did. I mentioned about the guy flying out to the cruise ship. That's an extreme flight and that's for somebody that's been flying for a long time. Um, but most of the, the flights that you'll do initially are probably you know not even gonna be five minutes long. So just keep it simple to start with, you'll sleep better. How do I engage return to home? So as I mentioned, the easiest way to engage return to home is once you take your drone off, those two buttons that you use, press here and then long press, they, they become return to home buttons. And so short press, long press, and your button will turn, uh, turn around and return to home. And it's as simple as that. So tip number 12 is always make sure that the home point is set on your Mini 3 Pro before you take off on whatever flight path you're gonna do. And the Mini 3 Pro will set the home point automatically. In the, the whole eight months I've been flying, I've never had a case where, I mean, I basically fire up the drone, I fire up the controller, and I just wait until I get that message, the home point has been acquired, and then I start to fly. And usually what I do is I'll wait till I get that message, and then I'll wait till I have a number of satellites acquired and then I'll start my uh, flight. And that's uh, the safest way to operate. Number 13, how many satellites do I need to acquire? Well, I think most people know that it takes three satellites to triangulate any location. DJI recommends that you're connected to at least 12. Nine times out of 10 when I'm flying, I pick up 18 to 24 satellites right away and I've hit as many as 33 satellites. So follow the best advice from DJI. Make sure you're connected to at least 12 satellites before you take off. I tend to wait till I have at least 24, 25 satellites. I've never had a problem uh, with that number of satellites. Tip number 14, error messages. That's the thing that um, freaked me out the most. So I was on a vacation a couple of weeks ago and I was at a trailer park connected to a golf course, which was um, fronting onto a, a huge lake, uh, not too far from where I live. And the second I put my drone up, I was getting an error message. It said, you're in a high risk flight zone, such and such resort is um, blah, 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 flying a, an aircraft. So uh, basically I knew the name of the resort. I knew that the owner of the resort had a son that was flying a Cessna giving joy rides out over the lake. So this freaked me out. I brought my drone down right away. And then I just waited a couple of days to see what the flight activity was. And I realized that you know, the aircraft pilots like a Cessna, they're not going to be buzzing the trailer park. They're not going to be buzzing the golf course because those people are going to complain. And so once I saw that, then I knew that there was a, 
a 50 foot wide stretch of trees, which was an environmental easement. And so the planes were landing, flying around out on the lake, doing their sightseeing thing. But on the other side of the trees was the trailer park and the golf course. So I knew that I could, I wanted to fly out there and get some scenic shots. And then I could turn the drone around and, and get some scenic shots of the lake and those kind of vistas. So just use common sense. Um, you know, but be aware you're going to get warning messages from time to time. And I'll show you an example of that later on in this video um, of the warning message that I've got and maybe one or two others. Tip number 15, how long should I fly? So the Mini 3 Pro with small batteries, you've got a 30 minute flight time, give or take. So 15 minutes out means 15 minutes back. 90% of flights, like I said, I've been flying for eight months now. 90% of my flights are like five to 12, maybe 15 minutes. That's pretty, uh, that's kind of unusual. I'd say they're probably under 10 uh, minute flight time. Just depends on what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve. Just use common sense. Just remember 15 minutes out means 15 minutes back. Give yourself a bit of a margin. So I typically tend to use 10 minutes out, 10 minutes back. Then I got a bit of a safety net. That's it. Tip number 16, which mode should I fly in? You're gonna start in no normal mode like everybody else, which means your crash avoidance system is gonna be engaged and it'll also be engaged in cine mode. The only difference is that cine mode slows down the uh, movement of the joystick. So your flight's not as jerky, your video footage is gonna be smoother. 99.9% .9 of the time now I fly in cine mode. In fact, I actually flew through a barn, which you'll see in later in the video, and I was flying in with the crash avoidance system engaged. I had no problems whatsoever. So I haven't used the sport mode yet, but I'm sure that day will come. So cine mode is the way to go in my humble opinion. Number 17, so like I just said, flying through a barn. So I have a friend that has a rather large dairy farm. We did a 360 turnaround uh, flight at his farm. And then he said, hey, the barn's open. Can we fly down through uh, they, they have a main channel way, I guess, where they, they move their vehicles in, in and out of the barn. And so I thought, hmm, okay, it's wide enough. It was probably, I don't know, 20 feet wide by maybe 25 or 30 feet high. So I flew my drone right through. I got an error message about three quarters of the way down that I'd lost connection with the satellites. But the Mini 3 Pro kept on going right out the other end, took it up, came back around, easy peasy. But just be aware that that's the, the best application or the best time when you want to be flying in sport mode. Because if you have collision avoidance on and I went too close to a wall, it could push the drone to the right or to the left. You could run into something. So, again, you're just going to have to be careful and judge for yourself depending on your uh, particular conditions. Tip number 18, which drone move should I start with? That's an easy one. So I started flying my drone in front of my house. I just took it out the front of the house, plunked it on a, a round piece of wood and, and flew it up maybe 20 feet and then bounced it back and forth of which I'll show you in the video. You can you see what I was doing. And what that does is that gets you familiar with how responsive the joysticks are. Just gets you familiar with, you know, the, the way the drone is gonna react to certain conditions. The Mini 3 Pro is uh, very forgiving to fly. It's easy to fly. You only have two joysticks, spend a little time with it. It's easy peasy. You've got two dials as well. So you can zoom in and out with your camera. Um, you can change the angle of camera. So it, it's a very uh, easy tool to fly in, in, again, in my humble opinion. Tip 19 is spotlight mode. So once you've been flying, so I've been flying uh, eight months now, and if, if I see something that I think would be a really good, I'd be able to get really good cinematic footage, I'm gonna use spotlight mode. So what is spotlight mode is when you're looking at the controller, you take your finger, you drag a little spot on the, that you wanna focus on, and then you can back your drone out and the controller will actually take your drone. So you can just hold your thumb on the left joystick and go, go this way or you can go this way and the controller will actually do the flying for you and you can change the height of the, the uh, drone during flight but basically the controller is taking control of the drone and flying the pattern for you and it's a really great way to get cinematic footage um, without any jerky movements. Tip number 20, last but not least, the Mini 3 Pro is 249 grams with a small battery. Therefore, it's classed as a kid's toy. Have fun with it. Go out and play with it. Um, you know, I have to say it's the most fun, uh, enjoyable tool toy that I, I've acquired in 2023. 
Um, you'll get great images, you'll get great footage. I use them over and over again in my YouTube videos and I can't recommend the Mini 3 Pro highly enough. It's a very forgiving aircraft to fly. Um, I'm sure you'll get you know many moons of enjoyment out of it. So if you're on the fence uh, and you can afford it, jump in and get one. Okay guys, so I've got uh, right now, I got 19 satellites acquired. So I'm gonna put the drone up and I'm just gonna touch the uh, button on the left here, hit takeoff. Okay, so I drive, currently driving a Honda Fit, and so I use the roof of the Honda Fit as my takeoff platform because I didn't have my little takeoff pad with me, but uh, I thought that was just as good. So what you can see on the screen now is I've got a 31 minute flight time. I've got 20 uh, satellites acquired on the top right hand side, and I'm actually in cine mode. I fly 90% of the time now in cine mode because it slows down uh, your actions with uh, the joysticks and it gives you a lot smoother footage. And so the best thing for anybody to do when you're going to start flying a drone, so all I've done is brought the drone over so that it's, it's fixed on like the red barn there. And now one of the easiest things that you can do is simply take the drone uh, straight up, do a 360 degree rotation, and you can see exactly what's out and about. Now, in a farm environment like this, I usually put the drone up about 50 meters, which is about 150 feet, and that's going to be above the tallest trees. Hydro poles are 35 feet. Uh, most trees are 50, 60 feet high. So 50 meters, up we go. Skies are looking kind of dramatic tonight because it's a little bit overcast, but uh, that should add to the uh, drama in the video, I guess. <laughs> There's the farmhouse in the background. And right now I'm only 15 meters, so I'm up higher than the trees, that's for sure. And usually at this point is when the rule of thirds in photography or video applies. And I'll use my left dial here. And when I'm flying, I usually have two thirds of the ground visible and one third of the sky. And that gives you a little bit better effect. So now I'm going to continue to take the drone up. So I'm at roughly uh, 34 meters here, which is about 90 feet. So that's well above any obstructions. I don't have to worry about hydro wires or anything like that. And um, so I'll take it up another 10 or 15. And so one of the things that I uh, found that would have been useful when I first got the drone was this neck strap. And so, you know, anything goes wrong with the drone, just take your fingers off of the joysticks and you've got your hands free, which is a big help uh, for doing tutorials like this or just using your drone in general. Another thing I'm doing now because I'm recording my screen, I've actually got the uh, receiver for the Comica Boom XD microphone lab system, and I've just got it clipped onto the strap here. And that's another handy feature. And so I'll just show you that on the screen. If I swipe down, that little microphone icon that shows up there, uh, what I found with the Boom XD is the microphone shows up. If I'm using my Rode Wireless Go, it, I can still record the screen um, on the DJI Mini 3 Pro but it doesn't show me the icon for some reason, but the Boom XD does, so I prefer to use it uh, instead. So now, all we're going to do is, you got two joysticks on the drone, this is really basic stuff, I'm just going to take the left jo uh, joystick and tilt it to the right, and we can take a look around. I can use the left dial and show a little bit more of the uh, ground cover. 
So this is my mother-in-law's farm, so I'm, I don't have to worry about uh, infringing on anybody's privacy rights. And that said, I actually flew my drone for the first time in a small subdivision where I live. And I've flown many times in that subdivision because I live out in the boonies. But what I typically do is I will uh, put the drone up 50 meters for the express purpose of nobody will know the, v the drone is there if you do that. If you come down to about, I don't know, uh, 30 meters, then people are going to pick up on the buzzing sound of the drone. It sounds like a swarm of bees. That's another relative's house off in the distance, and that's another thing that caused me some anxiety when I first got my drone, was just exactly how far can you fly your drone before you're going to lose control of it. And so I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. So I'll just speed up this rotation a little bit. There's a gravel pit that's uh, part of the farm. Another big lake out in the background there. I got 20 minutes, 22 minutes of flight time left. And there's the farmhouse. And we've done our first 360 rotation. So we're right, basically right back to where we started. And to bring the drone down, all I have to do is take the left joystick and move it straight down and the drone will start to come down. And you can probably hear it. I can see it. There's my car and to land it, all I gotta do is keep taking the, the joystick on the left side down. And so that's our first flight, safe, nice and easy. Just take it up, straight up, 50 meters, 360 degree rotation, bring it back down, nothing to worry about. Uh, so then the question becomes, how far can you fly the drone? So I'll give you an idea. The other day I watched a video of a guy standing on a beach. He flew his drone 2000 meters out into the ocean and he got it right up beside a cruise ship before he started having signal loss problems. So I'm going to give you a demonstration. If it's not too windy here, if I don't get any warnings, I can fly uh, fairly safely down to that house we saw in the video, which is about 1,200 feet. So let's give that a try. We'll take the drone off again. We're going to take it straight up. Now there's 50 meters, and let's bring the camera down a little bit. And we'll turn the drone around. So that house right there, off in the distance that you can see is a relative's place. And so your drone is gonna fly in the direction of the camera. So I'm gonna take the right joystick and just move it forward. And drone's gonna fly in that direction. Another thing that's going to cause you anxiety when you're first uh, flying your drone for the first time is that 
you're going to freak out when you look up and you don't see the drone. And in, if you're worried in that case, just take your thumbs off of the joysticks. And you have to get used to looking at the screen and, and, and get used to, you know, the camera is looking at and it'll tell you exactly where the drone is right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit and I'm going to push forward on the right joystick. I'm going in the wrong direction here. There we go. So now that I can, I'm seeing that I'm almost over top of my relative's house, and let's pull the camera down a little more. And my distance right now is 364 meters. So that's quite a ways. That's about 1,200 feet. And so now I'm going to take the camera up again. So if you're looking for a starting point, 364 meters, I guess would be a good one for you. And now I'm just gonna turn the camera around. I find the best way to fly the drone is to point the camera in the direction you wanna go There's the gravel pit we saw earlier. Oh. And the crosshairs are just coming up. I'm standing right where that road is there, right about there at the other end of the cornfield. And now I'll just press forward on the right joystick and we'll bring the drone back to us. The amazing thing about little, the Mini 3 Pro is how fast it moves. And by being up 50 meters, I don't have to worry about the drone going to hit the barn or any, any hydro wires or anything like that. And when I get to this point, now the question is where exactly is the drone? So what I'll usually do is hit the dial on the left side, bring the camera down. There's my car right there but you have to bring the camera all the way straight down. And so I'm pretty much just at the edge of the cornfield right now. So I'll go a little bit further forward. And I can move the joystick to the left. Okay. That's pretty darn good, okay? And that took like two or three minutes to fly down there and back. So that's a good example of how fast the drone moves. Easy peasy. Now I'm gonna hit the left joystick and I'm gonna bring the drone straight back down. Might as well enjoy the scenery on the way down. So I'll tilt the camera back up. There we go. Something like that is usually where I have it. And then we'll bring the, the drone straight down. As you can see, it's, uh, I think it's August the 20th today. The corn's doing pretty good. So I can hear the drone. It's about 20, 30 feet above my head. I'll bring it right down. There we go. We turn it around and bring it forward a little bit. And uh, just to give you something to look at here, I guess. Looks like an old ice hut being stored here. There's the barn, my car. There's an old truck. I still have 12 minutes of flight time. I've got 30 uh, satellites acquired, all going back to 29.
Okay, so one thing I did not know when I first started flying my drone, and that is that the drone gets cooled by the propellers when you're flying it. So when you go to bind your drone, you take it out of the box and you go through the, the uh, binding process for the first time, you may get an overheat warning uh, on your controller, and that's because the drone itself is not getting any cooling. So right now is, is really a good thing for it because the blades are turning and they're cooling the drone down. Another thing if you're flying for the first time is find yourself a field like what I got behind me right now and just take your drone out, put it up 10 or 15 feet, make sure you've got no clotheslines, no hydro wires, no other instructions, obstructions, and then you can just fly it around and, and get the feel of the joysticks. I can tell you from experience now, I've been flying for about eight months, that the Mini 3 Pro is the, it's really forgiving. I, I started out flying in normal mode, now I fly it in cine mode all the time, and I'll just give you a little demonstration here and you can judge for yourself. So I'm just flying by eyesight right now. So I've just taken the drone up a little ways, like so. I can rotate it around. There's the barn just off to the left. There's the road out in the background. And now the drone is almost lined up with myself here. If I bring the camera down a little bit. And so one thing you're going to fly in flying a drone is that it's a fantastic tool because you can use it to, you know, if there's a leak on the roof of the barn or something like that, um, you can take the drone up and, and find little infractions like that. What you don't want to do, uh, one of the things that I got sort of sucked into, and that is every Tom, Dick and Harry relative you're going to have is going to want you to bring the drone and fly over their property or fly here or fly there. And the last thing you want is the pressure of somebody standing over your shoulder watching what you're doing because that's a perfect example of how you're going to plow the drone into the water or into a tree or something like that. So you're better off to just come out into a field like this, play around with the joysticks, get, the, get a feel for what the drone can do and how fast it reacts. Okay, so when you're flying in normal mode or cine mode, the drone has collision avoidance engaged. And I'm going to show you some examples later on in this video. Um, I haven't flown the drone yet in sport mode where the avoidance system has not been on. And you'll be amazed at what you can do with just the basic uh, flight modes of the drone. And so now I'm getting down on my flight time. So. I'm down to eight minutes, so I'm going to land the drone and we'll move on to the next segment. Okay guys, so this was a little bit longer video, but I felt the information was really important. It's a lot of the stuff that just caused me anxiety when I was flying my drone for the first time. Like I say, I've got eight months under my belt now, so I'm planning to do more of these type videos, so let me know what you think. And if you found the video useful, hit the subscribe, like, and notification bell for me. I really appreciate it. Do not hesitate to connect in if you've got questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care now.